Right, folks, I don't know whether you've seen these receiver onlys. I thought we'd do something slightly different. Complete thing, plugs into 12 volt socket, comes with a some kind of mag mount, and is programmable for all Europe, including the UK. And this is the Intec CBM 450. So I thought what would happen if it was half decent, it would be a half populated CB radio board inside from one of their lower models, and I was wrong. So I'll just move the box out of the way. And now we have the product. Got a phono socket on the back and an external speaker socket. So other than that, it looks very much like a normal CB radio uh, in a plastics case. Now I'll just pause the video because I'm going to, have to go and get a facility to plug a cigarette lighter in because this bench doesn't have cigarette lighter socket. Right, so to program this holding the up button and switching it on and we can now go up and down the various facilities it has there we go U01 so I'll switch it off switch it back on and it's definitely in U Right, so we're going to put it on channel 20 to do our normal test kind of procedure. And all we need to do now, I've just realised, is to find a phono adapter so I can plus the, plug the test instruments in. So we have a phono to BNC. Our test instrument is terminated in a BNC. So that will now go in the socket. plug the test instrument into the external socket and hopefully yes there we go well they give you an S meter as well how about that right we'll open it up So inside, we find an SRBP board. You'll probably realise that a lot of uh, CB radios today have moved away from SRBP, which is synthetic resin bonded paper, and onto fiberglass printed circuits. So there's the usual kind of coils. It's not a, um, a CB radio which is half populated, as I guessed it would be. I was totally wrong. It's dedicated for this job. And it's all surface mount, synthesized, clever chips and all that. Just like you'd expect in a modern CB radio. In fact, you'll see there, that's a crystal filter. So you've got ceramic for the 455, you've got a crystal filter for 10.695. So that's quite impressive. And then the frequency will be set with that there. Now to do that we'll be used, having to use the marker oscillator. So we'll come to that. So let's see what we can get out of it. What I'm going to do is actually put the bottom back on. We don't need to have the bottom exposed. So we'll put the bottom back on. Especially if I put it the right way around. Alright, so what have we got? We've got um, Three microvolts, one microvolt, 0.3. Well, it's very good. So we'll start with
tempted not to touch the one which is sealed, which is there. That could well be the VCO. Now, oops, that's going to be the detector. So we'll just set that to S9, 100 microvolt signal, and adjust the oscilloscope for maximum output. Actually, I've just managed to get a little bit out of it there. We'll just see whether we can improve on this IF1. No, that's one microvolt. Um, let's have a see. What can we get? Just about does 0.3. So it's not bad. So let's think. We need to just check it's on frequency. So it's a matter of. That's going to be the adjustment, which is C11 to that crystal, just to that side. Okay. So I'm just going to get a marker oscillator to put 455, inject 455 kilohertz. Switch the signal generator's tone off. So I've got this IF signal injector. I'm just going to put the output of that near the IF, and hopefully we can hear a musical note. Can you hear that? And then we lower it till it's null. And then we know it's on frequency. So I've got the signal generated with the correct frequency, channel 20 UK, 27.79125, of 455 kilohertz IF oscillator. You could also do this using 10.695. Turn back on. And we know now that's on frequency. So there's nothing more to adjust in there, and we'll stick it back together, and I'll go on a on the air test with the, my colleague Mr. C. I did notice that you've got channel, uh, you've got an emergency switch here, so you can go through channel nine, channel nineteen, and back to the channel you were on. Um, automatic noise limiter. What I wasn't going to, what I must do is just check the squelch. You've got an auto squelch setting. The preset for that, we'll just do that, is to the left there. So let's see where that is. That's all right. It comes in at uh, three. If you wanted to adjust the auto squelch, which is preset squelch, it's that one there. So presumably that's the normal squelch. I don't know what that does, whether it's a voltage regulator, I don't know, I'm going to leave well alone. But I would presume that's the ordinary squelch. We'll just check the squelch performs. So, squelch to minimum. Set threshold. Signal generator on. And it comes straight in. So, squelch to full. Comes in at 300 microvolts. Just to prove it, I will just adjust that. It is. And I'll just check it still works on the bottom setting. It does. So there you are, that's the preset squelch and that's the normal squelch. There isn't really anything else I can say about this nice little receiver. We'll see how it performs. Obviously, I won't be able to talk to him, 
because he's going to talk to me at the usual um, locations from starting at six and a half miles away. Thank you for watching.